Welcome to the Microsoft Excel 2007 uh, linear programming using solver exercise. Open the corresponding files that have been given to you by your instructor, one being a Word file that gives you instructions about what you need to do and the other one being a spreadsheet. Now let's see what this spreadsheet is all about. This spreadsheet uh, gives us an example of a pharmaceutical company called Clean Pharmaceuticals which among their products they are producing uh, four products that have something in common and that's something that they have in common is that they are made out of the same four raw materials so you can see like each one of those product lines creative products is made out of the same raw materials but these products are different because they are using a different combination of these uh, raw materials as we can see here so for example in order to produce one unit let's say one bottle of a nose spray for adults you need to use 50, 55 units of uh, disodium well something and then 38 units of sodium phosphate and then five, 55 units of sorbitol and 42 units of purified water now if you want to create a fixed dosage nose spray you're going to use the same exactly raw materials but in different quantities and the same goes for the next uh, two types of products now as you can see here we do not have any production quantities actually this is what we need to find in the, uh, later on uh, but we do have a unit price so nose spray for adults is sold for 2.10 euros and then fixed doses nose spray for 2.4 euros and nose drops 2 euros and children edition uh, 1.8 euros. Now, sales are being determined by multiplying quantity of each one of those products to the unit price. Now, if that was a very large spreadsheet, the most economic in terms of memory and therefore fastest in terms of speed uh, method to calculate that would be using an array. So, this is a chance, although this is not the goal of this spreadsheet, to actually uh, display uh, how you can use arrays in calculating. Uh, formulas that will use less memory and therefore they will be faster in their execution. So in order to do so you select the area of the results so you select all the sales area and then you type your formula which would be multiplying quantity times unit price but instead of just multiplying uh, the quantity of no spray you select the whole range and then you multiply with the whole range that contains the unit prices and then before pressing enter you hold down control and shift and then you press enter so if you observe here you have a formula that multiplies ranges which is placed in anti brackets depicting that this is an array formula now the benefits of an array formula are first of all that excel stores the formula once instead of storing it four times and therefore it uh, uses memory that is that use the memory for the whole range only once and not for or n times given that another spreadsheet might have like a larger range of results and also that somebody cannot really make changes in that formula by action let's say by accident if i try to delete this one i get to receive an error message that depicts that i cannot change part of an array meaning in other words that if i want to check, make changes in this one or delete it, I have to select the whole range and then I have to go here and make the changes I want. Now that formula would be much faster, obviously, of course, you could see something in a spreadsheet that has large volumes of, uh, of data. Now here, I have the inventory on hand. So I have uh, 410,000 units of the sodium and then 3,200,000 units, units of sodium phosphate. 3,500 units of sorbitol and then I have 160,000 units of purified water. So I want to find out that if I actually produce quantities in this range, how much of each one of those units I'm going to use in order to produce each one of those products. So one way of doing that, which is probably the most simple way and is covered by the knowledge you have so far, is to create a formula that multiplies the corresponding amount of uh, units used for producing no spray uh, times the quantity that will be used but in, in this case I have to, to be careful to actually put a dollar sign 
in front of G so that when I copy that to the right G doesn't change into HIJ because <clears throat> the quantity is always in the G column and then add this to the next uh, instance of the sodium for no spray fixed dosage for adults times again the corresponding uh, quantity but then again I have to be careful to put a dollar sign before G and then add this to the next one uh, times the corresponding quantity again the dollar sign before G for the same reasons and then add this to the next one times the corresponding quantity uh, making sure that I remember to place the dollar sign there and if I press enter obviously I have zero because I don't have any quantities but if I copy that to the right side then I get the results I want now, the, now that I have a formula calculating the units used, then let's put some, for, some, some quantities here so that I have something to play with. Let's say this. Now, if I produce those quantities, what this range tells us is that I have used that amount of units from the inventory I have on hand. Given that I know the cost of those units, I can actually calculate here how much I spent in order to produce these quantities by multiplying the units used times the units cost and then copy this formula to the right side and I have the cost of goods to produce these particular quantities in this range based on the units that were used in order to produce those quantities now the revenue is pretty simple would be the sum but be careful, some doesn't always select by itself the appropriate range of the sales. So I reselect. And then the cost of goods would be some. And again, be careful to select the appropriate range because some by itself does not manage always to do that. And press enter. And the margin, of course, would be the difference between those two. Now, please move on to the second part of this tutorial to see how I, we proceed. Thank you for attending the first part.